Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be working with an infinite fraction. We have 2 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2 plus dot dot dot, hopefully you get the idea. This is kind of like an infinite pattern. And we're going to try to evaluate this expression. Obviously, what I mean by expression is a numerical value, alright? So let's see how we can do this. First of all, I'm not going to go into any type of convergence, limit, so on and so forth. I'm just going to assume that this value exists, so this, when written as a sequence, converges, which we'll, we'll do in a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and set the whole thing equal to x. Usually start by, if you have an infinite expression, could be a radical, could be uh, a fraction like this, you set pretty much the whole thing equal to x, and then you try to find x again. Because these expressions contain themselves infinitely many times. And take a look. The denominator of this fraction is actually the same thing with the original. So if this whole thing is x, then this will also be x. You see that? And this will also be x, right, obviously, and there's more x's inside, but you don't really need to go that deep. This is good enough. So let's see we can, if we can write this as an equation, all right, and solve for x. So from here we get 2 plus 1 over x, right, the whole thing was called x equals x. Looks fairly simple, right? And then multiply everything by x, 2x plus 1 equals x squared. And then we want to put everything on the same side. x squared minus 2x minus 1 equals 0. And now let's go ahead and solve this as a quadratic. You can do completing the square or just to use the quadratic formula. Let me show you how completing the square works because that's kind of fun. First, you're going to add 1 to both sides, so isolate the constant number, and then add one to both sides. Why are we adding one? You might be questioning. I need to look at coefficient of x and then cut that number in half and if I square that number that gives me the number that I, I should add. Okay? That's always going to work with uh, in case of uh, b instead of the two you can figure out what you need to add. So now I'm going to add one to both sides and that's going to give me a perfect square on the left hand side which is perfect and now from here I get two solutions because there are two numbers whose square equals 2. Those numbers are plus minus root 2, right? And then after adding 1 to both sides, you're going to get 1 plus minus root 2. What does that mean though, plus minus? I know I, I wrote the plus minus differently, so don't be surprised. Now, this means that there are two solutions and one of them is 1 plus root 2 and the other one is 1 minus root 2. Wait a minute. A numerical expression cannot have, have two different values, can it? No way. It's impossible, right? So there's a problem here. We have to eliminate one of these, or does that mean this expression does not have a value? Obviously, this is not clickbait. We're going to find the numerical value. But how do we eliminate one of them? If you look at the original expression carefully, you can realize that this expression is positive, isn't it? And now looking at the results, 1 minus root 2 is less than 0, so we have to eliminate it. Too bad. Okay. Now we end up with 1 plus root 2, which is hopefully supposed to be the value of this expression, right? I hope so. Now, how do we kind of verify this? First of all, we need to define our sequence. So we need to kind of, this needs to be well defined. So here's what we can do. We can say, hey, a sub 1 is equal to 2, and then a sub n plus 1 is equal to 2 plus 1 over a sub n. So I'm kind of defining it uh, recursively, right? And what I do is I start with 2 and then put that 2 in the denominator of a fraction, a unit fraction, and then I just add to it. And keep doing it, and you're going to get the following. If you look at some of the terms, this should give you an idea. So a sub 1 is equal to 2, yes. a sub 2 is going to be 2 plus 1 over a sub 1, which is 2 plus 1 half, and that's going to be 5 halves. Great. A sub 3 is going to be 2 plus 1 over A sub 2, but that's just 5 halves. That becomes 2 fifths. When you add them, they're going to be 12 over 5. And A sub 4 is just going to be 2 plus 1 over A sub 3 by definition. Again, I'm just using the definition because here N is actually supposed to be greater or equal to 1, right? Uh, and that's an integer. And now we have 2 plus 1 over 12 over 5, which is 5 over 12. And when you add the 2, you're going to get 29 over 12. Great. So this is 2.5, this is 2.4, and who knows what this is, right? 2 point something. And we start with 2. So the values seem to 
be near maybe 2.5 ish we're gonna find out what that's uh, gonna look like in a little bit or did we we actually did right so that's the value we've been looking for one plus root two root two is about 1.4 so when you add one it's gonna be about 2.4 so this seems about right but the problem is how do we guarantee that this value does not jump outside so here's the thing this expression is actually so we can go ahead and kind of divide 12 into 2 to 29 and see what that looks like it's going to go 24 times i mean 2 times 24 and then you get the idea and this is going to be 4 and then that's going to give us a 48 remainder 2 and that's going to be 1. now notice that uh we started off with uh 2 point uh we started with 2 2.5 2.4 2.41 and you can just continue but you're going to realize something that those values are going to accumulate near uh, 2.4 something, all right? And that value is actually given by 1 plus root 2. So there is actually a way, and this, uh, in other words, this actually this sequence is bounded from above. And you can definitely, you can safely say that this expression is always going to be less than 3, or you could even use 4, right? And I kind of use induction to prove the idea but I want to show you something else so here is how we can work backwards that's gonna be fun let me show you something this is really cool so I'm gonna start this time with square root of 2 plus 1 and I you know that it's a finite value right so I mean it is a numerical value great so I'm gonna write it as follows I would like to get a 2 from this I want to separate the 2 so I'm gonna write it as 2 plus root 2 but I just added an extra 2, so I have to subtract it. Make sense? Now, here's the cool part. Root 2 minus 1 and root 2 plus 1 are actually conjugates. So their product is 1. Root 2 plus 1 times root 2 minus 1 equals 2 minus 1, which is 1. Which means whenever you see root 2 plus 1 or root 2 minus 1, you can write it as the reciprocal of the other. So here, I can actually replace this with 1 over root 2 plus 1, which is nice and then add the 2 to it and I started off with this remember okay don't forget that now I got root 2 plus 1 and again I'm gonna do the same thing that I did here split it up into 2 plus 1 over 2 plus root 2 minus 1 just like before and then this part can be written as a reciprocal and let me just kind of tell you that this is the same thing I'm gonna use 2 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over root 2 plus 1. Remember, root 2 plus 1 and root 2 minus 1 are reciprocals, so you can write root 2 minus 1 as 1 over root 2 plus 1. And guess what? You can continue to do this, like you can do this forever, and you're going to get our original infinite fraction. So we kind of worked backwards. We started with the value. By manipulating the root 2 and the numbers, we arrive at the original expression. All right? So that's going to be the value of our expression, which is root 2 plus 1. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.